Hello and welcome to another edition of Commodore 64 Programming with Deadline. That's me. Today we're going to be going over disk status, directory, and drive number variable. And this is the program we're going to create. It's uh, a disk tool. Example program. Pretty simple. Not too complicated. Let's get started. So, as you can see, we've got a simple starting program. I had some comments at the top already. I've imported the constants.asm, imported macros.asm, and the draw pet mate screen macro as well. That was just to get started. So, I've already created a pet mate screen, and I'll show you what that looks like. Let's see. Here it is in PetMate. I've already edited that and exported it to disk tool program screen.asm. So I've already shown you how to do that. It puts it out to a disk tool program screen.asm kick assembler data file. Assembly language data file. And there it is. And I named it screen disk tool. So what we're going to do is, with that, we're going to set it at location 1000, and then import um, disk tool program screen.asm. Come on. All right. Um, now for the drive number, we're going to need a variable. So we're going to do .var, which is the kick similar directive for variable. We'll call it drive number, and uh, we're going to put it at uh, zero page safe location FB. We're not going to be using zero page stuff in this example so it's going to be safe there and then we're going to do our basic upstart basic upstart this is the built-in kick assembler basic upstart which puts like 10 sys 2064 or whatever location you put we're going to do 080D as our main program. Main program. <clears throat> so now we've got the basic upstart done. We can start working on the program. In it, make a label. Let's store 8 into the drive number variable. Um, load accumulator with 08 store at, at drive number and we're done with that let's change the screen output to white print this will be this will look better than just the plain old light blue color um, code 5 is what you want to use for white and I'm not sure if you can do it or not but um, might be able to use that but I'm just going to use 05 all right new label start so this is going to init in the program store 8 in the drive number and set the color printing to white now we're going to draw our screen at start draw pet mate screen screen disk tool that is the uh, label in, that's in the disk tool program screen dot ASM here and that's where it's going to draw from 
and we'll draw the PetMate screen onto the screen. And that's from uh, tutorial number six that I did, which was the last one actually. All right, anyways, um, next thing we wanna do is, um, uh, let's create a new um, subroutine called draw drive number onto the screen. Cause we're gonna wanna know what drive number we're dealing with, right? So we're gonna show the drive number on the screen, okay? All right, so we'll load accumulator with drive number. Um, we'll clear the carry flag. Uh, actually, before I go into that, let's let's go down. Let's make uh, the codes that we're going to be printing. Drive number text. Okay, and the text. Is going to be 0809 10 and 11 right this is so this is an easy way to convert what's actually stored in drive number onto the screen okay so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate where in that table we're going to print from it's actually going to be loading accumulator and storing it in screen memory. So what we want to do is clear the carry and this is setting up a rotate left clear carry flag. I'll explain it in a minute. So we don't rotate carry into accumulator. All right, so then we're gonna do a rotate left on the drive number that we loaded into the accumulator. Rotate left, and this is actually going to multiply by two. And this is because if you look down here in the text, you have two digits for each one, 0, 08, 0, 09, 10, and 11. Those are both two digits, right? Or two characters. That's why we're multiplying by two here. So then we're gonna set the carry flag. And this is going to set the carry, carry flag for subtract operation. Okay. Um, so we've multiplied the drive by two. So if it's eight, it's gonna be 16. So we're gonna subtract 10 hacks, which is 16. Subtract 16. And this is gonna give us, if it's eight, it's gonna give us zero. So it's gonna start at this location when we're looking up what, what index we're at in the table. So we've subtracted, to, 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 to. then we're gonna transfer the accumulator to the X register and then load accumulator with drive number text comma x. It's a little trick, right? And get the text indexed by x, right? We're gonna store the accumulator. Now, let's take a look. Where's our pet mate screen? Okay, so let's take a look at the pet mate screen again. Now down here um, at C, where it says change drive, and it's got brackets, and then the drive number. This is where we're gonna wanna print it, into this little block. And I've already pre-calculated where it's going to be before I put this together. And um, it's going to be at location number uh, 07. Three seven, right on the screen. Put to the screen. Then we're going to load the accumulator with drive number text plus one, 
comma X. I would get the next character. And guess what? We're gonna zero we're gonna store that at 0738. Right? That's all we need to do. And our return from subroutine. Right? So that's that whole draw drive number. That should work. Hopefully it does. Um, let's see. Jump subroutine draw drive number. With, that's the routine we just wrote. And then jump to main loop. We've already set up the initialize here. Now we've done the start. Draw the pet mate screen, disk tool. Draw the drive number and then jump to main loop. And now we're at main loop. And what are we going to want to do? Um, the screen obviously has some things that you want to press like D, C, and T for status. So we're going to need to get keyboard input, right? So the keyboard input, whoops, wrong screen. Keyboard input is going to be, um, Jump subroutine, kernel, get in. Now we'll get the keyboard. Check keyboard for key hits. All right. So the first one we're going to do is D. Or wait, what do we want to do first? Where, where's our D directory? Right. For the directory screen. <laughs> oh man. Um, let's set up a label, check key, colon. Well, I guess we really need that one to begin with. But if we want to move stuff around, it makes it easier. And so in the constants file, I've updated that and I've added some constants for keys. So to make it easier. So we want to compare it with key underscore D, right? Let's take a look at what that does in our constants file. Down at the bottom here, I've added a bunch of keys. So key D is actually hex 44, for instance. So we don't have to remember all those numbers. We can just say, we won't press key D. We want to test key D. Well, just type key underscore D. Alright, branch if not equal, do not check key plus, this will go to the next one. If it didn't press D, we'll go to the next check key. And so, just for fun, we'll do D02, increment the back, the border color, and then we'll jump subroutine, show directory. And we haven't written that yet. But we're just going to go ahead and set that up. And then after that, we're going to go to jump start. And that'll be the end of D. The end of D, right there. And so then, what else we want? We want C for change drive. And up here is D for directory. All right. So let's go ahead and just copy this. Boom. Key C. I'm going to take these out because it's going to be different. Now you see what's going on here. Since I've made that um, label with the exclamation mark, I can just copy this little copy this little section of code to do the next key and it makes it easier. Alright, so for the change drive, it should be fairly simple. We we'll just increment the drive number, right? And since there's only four, it's not going to be that much of a hassle to just toggle through them. Load the accumulator with drive number, compare it with 0C, zero because 0B zero would be 11. 
And so if it hits 0C, we want to um, change it back to 8, right? Load accumulator was 08. Whoa, not 80. I don't think there is a drive 80. I don't think that'll work. Then we'll store that in the drive number variable. Now we'll come here and put not CKI label. So that means we'll jump over that. We'll skip loading 8 into the drive number if it hasn't reached. 12 yet. Alright, so then we're going to jump to subroutine draw drive number. That's our routine that we've already written. And then jump to main loop. And that should update on the screen as well. It'll increment the drive number and draw it onto the screen. Simple. So next is check key. We want to do T for status, right? Key T. Now this is going to be different. Um, so on our vice screen, if you look, it's T down here, right? And then T is going to put the status, right, of the drive, right there. So how do we get that? What we got to do is do a print home character and then down a certain amount of times and then over to the right a certain amount of times and then call the drive status subroutine to print it out okay so let's see what's next um, right we've got that we're gonna load the accumulator with a 13 13 is the home character. I should be, probably do some constants too for these. I wonder if home is the same as keys. Let's see. Home 13. Actually it is. So I could probably just copy this whole key thing and make some new constants. But anyway, that'll make it easier to read. So then we're going to jump to subroutine kernel. Char out. Wait a minute, did I put that up here? Yeah, let's change that to kernel char out. FFD2, kernel char out. Everyone should know that by now. Anyway, um, so we printed the home character. Now we want to load accumulator. Uh, with 16 load X actually and this will print down 22 times so we're printing home now we're gonna print down we'll make a, a loop label here CKI load the accumulator with 11 which is down character is it down here too? Cursor should be cursor down. Cursor down is 11. Yep, I'm going to go back and update that later. Put some new constants in there to make it easier to read. Um, Alright, so what are we doing? So we're going to jump subroutine kernel char out again. And print that out. And then we'll decrement the X register. Come on, man. Come on, man. Decrement X. Branch of not equal to CKI minus. That'll um, count down the X register until it's zero, at which case it'll break out of this loop here. Right? So then the next thing we want to load X with 10 so we can print right 16 times. And then jump subroutine kernel char out. Yep, and um, kernel char out, then decrement in the X register again. 
Um, I think we need a label here. This is, yeah. We need CKI here, actually. Right after the tin, and then a load accumulator with um, 1D right character. I just want to double check and see if the right is 1D. Yep. It looks like it's lining up. I can make some new constants. It's going to be easier to read. CKI minus. Branch if not equal. So we loaded the X with 10. Load accumulator with right character. Print that out. Decrement X until it hits 0. And that will put right on the screen 16 times and then we'll jump to subroutine show drive status All right and jump to main loop and finally <clears throat> we're going to put check key a final check key so that if this is checking it negatively it'll jump over this stuff to check key and plus like if we want to add some more in the future which I will be doing to this program in part 8 to add load and save routines so alright and there we go that's the main loop done yep. Now just to check it, what we're going to do is we're going to create our um, show directory. Come on. Come on, man. Show directory, subroutine, show drive status, RTS, I think, was that it? Show drive status. Show. Drive, drive, drive number. I've already done that. And show directory. So this should compile and run. Let's try it. Hey, it's working. It should not do anything. Should change the drive number though, which it does in T. Right. But just to check and see if the keys are working properly, what we'll do is on these subroutines, we'll increment string d020 here and also here this is a way that we can test to see if the keys and the subroutines are working okay so d uh oh oh yeah it is i can see little flashes in there so d is working t t is working as well c c is working all working good so now we can start working on the actual um, disk directory and show drive status routines so for the disk directory routine I want to show you here on codebase 64 we got a listing <clears throat> for input output and then DOS examples and then reading directory now these aren't in kick assembler code but this is the actual thing that I'm going to be going by right so it's a simple routine which reads the directory file from the device and prints it to the screen and I'm, what I'm going to do is convert this to kick assembler okay and um Let's see what else. There's also status here, I believe. Was that in there? Reading the error channel. It's this status, yes. It's on there too. But this is where I'm getting this from. But we're going to convert that to kick assembly. So it'll work. So show directory. First thing 
we we're going from the menu uh, screen so let's clear the screen <clears throat> to black you don't have to do this but it'd probably look pretty ugly if you don't all right next thing is we're going to load accumulator with um, dire name and minus dire name and so what that is going to correspond to is down here let's take this increment d020 out we no longer need that um, the dire name dire name is going to be let's see where is that Okay, we'll put that here. Dar name colon dot text dollar sign dar name end. So there you go. It puts dar name and it's just a dollar sign. Right. Okay, and what's next? All right, so for the next part, we're gonna load the X register with the dar name um, lo, low byte, and then load Y with the dar name high byte. Okay, so the first one was the length. Oh, that's what that is. So this is, let's document that. Set length of di directory name. And then low byte of dar name. And high byte of dar name. Okay, so there we go. And this will We'll jump to subroutine kernel set name set name yep there we go that will set the name for the disk operation and that's generally what you're gonna do for disk operations they're gonna need a name most of the time all right so now we'll set the logical drive number um, load accumulator with 02 file number uh, load uh, X with drive number this is our drive number variable pretty self-explanatory here default to device 8 number 8 but we can change that from the C with the C command. All right, so load Y with the secondary. Oh, come on, man. Load Y with zero. This is the secondary address. <clears throat> All right. Then jump to routine, kernel. Set LFS, set logical file system. Boom, two things are done now in order to show the disk directory. We're almost done. Well, actually, about one third of the way through this subroutine, I think. What's next? Um, so, load Y with 04, skip four bytes. on first dear line and then branch of not equal to skip to put a next label load y with zero two skip two bytes on all other lines Get to label. Okay. 
So this is setting it up. For the first read, it's going to skip four bytes. And then on previous, on subsequent reads, it's going to only skip two bytes. So jump subroutine, get bytes. This will be a subroutine that we're, we'll set up here in a minute. All right. <clears throat> okay, decrement the wire register. Branch of Nanticule to skip to you. And that's uh, pretty much just throwing out anything that it gets for two, two times. It'll skip. Alright, so we skipped two bytes. So we're going to jump to subroutine and get byte again. We'll start doing stuff. Get low byte of basic line number. Transfer that to Y. Jump to subroutine, get byte again. Um, and then that would be the high byte. Of basic line number right so we're going to push the accumulator push that onto the accumulator then transfer Y to the A register and then transfer A to the X register <laughs> and then pull A Right. Pretty neat juggling there. And then jump to subroutine kernel B. I don't know if there is a constant for this. This is the binary coded decimal routine. It will print a basic line number. So okay, these first two bytes, low and byte, low and high byte of the basic line number, it's reading off the disk of the directory. Then it's going to print the number to the screen. Okay. And then load accumulator with twenty. Print space. Char, do, do a label called char, and then jump subroutine kernel char out. And then jump subroutine get byte again. Branch if not equal to char. <coughs> so yeah, that'll just keep printing until it gets a zero character it looks like. Load accumulator with 0D, that is the carriage return. Or new line character. Actually, I should put character carriage return. Because <clears throat> uh, it's different on a Commodore. <clears throat> And then jump subroutine kernel char out. So that will put it to the next line. Right? What is FFE1? FFE1. Is it in here? Kernel stop. Let's call it that. Let's call it what it is, man. You know what I mean? Run, stop, pressed. <laughs> I 
then branch if not equal to next so we can run stop out of the directory listing while we're doing this by it'll, it'll check to see if run stop is pressed so there we go um do we put error yet No, nope, but what we're going to do here, put a label called error, check for errors here, here, we're not going to be doing any error checking, it's just going to be strictly, we're going to consider that our disk is good and that the files and stuff that we wanted to check is good. File number two. Jump subroutine. Kernel close. So we're closing the file number. It's an FFC3, yeah. Kernel close is what we're doing. How do we get out of this? Branch pack, what a char. Oh, okay. I think I might have missed something here. Maybe not. Anyway, let's see how it goes. I'm converting that code. So, we'll see if it works. Kernel close, kernel close, kernel close. All right, so jump subroutine after that, kernel clear channel is what we want to call. And we'll do a 0D, another return, kernel char out, right? And jump subroutine show drive status. This will be uh, from this routine down here that we haven't done yet. After it's all printed out. And what we also want to put in is a press key. Press any key. Any key. Right? Load the accumulator with dire. Press key, comma X. This is the text output. Let's name this text. This is just printing it out. Um, branch of equal to we'll call it any key. Jump subroutine kernel char out and then increment x register. Come on, man. This I, I gotta fix that auto complete junk. Any key text. All right. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And this will be any key. Jump subroutine, kernel, wait, key. So, is that a thing? Wait, key. I'm pretty sure it is. Wait for key, yep. So it's an easy way to just wait for a key. Current jump subroutine kernel wait key. It doesn't matter what key that you hit. Any one of them will work. Branch of equals to any key. 
and then we'll return from subroutine. And that is our routine. So hopefully that'll work. Let's try it. Let's try it and see what happens. Ooh, we got some errors. Let's see what it says. Unknown symbol, dire name, get bytes. Oh, right, right. We need to do the get byte subroutine. And there was also drive name problem. What line was that on? 105. There we go. Put an E on there. And then get byte. We need the get byte subroutine. So the get byte subroutine is, is going to be here. Get byte jump subroutine uh, kernel ch -ch -ch read st read status byte branch five equals to end. All right. And then put a new label end. And then in between that, we'll put jump to kernel char in. Yes, char in. And then pull accumulator. And then pull accumulator again. And then jump to exit. Why is it doing that? Don't return to dar reading loop. What? Where's exit? Ah, it looks like it's doing some stack tricks. We'll see what happens if we run that. Compilation file. Failed with errors. Load accumulator with dire press key text. Oh, I know what I need to do. We need to put in... A table dire press key text. Let's do encoding Petsky mixed. This is a kick a similar encoding method. That byte 0D. And then we'll put text press to any key. That will follow that by dot byte zero. And that should end it. That should be the end of it. Come on, work. Compile failed with errors. Branch. Okay, I need to put a plus there on this one. Because we're using the exclamation mark with the label, it requires a plus or minus. So we're gonna go plus to any key. Yep. Close that. Is that the last of the errors? Nope. What error do we have? Unknown symbol. Oh. <laughs> I gotta put that there. I'm mixing labels and stuff. Um, 162. We'll do an any key minus there. Interesting. Hey, it's working. Cool. D. Oops. Something is not working. What, though? I wonder. Let 
Let's change this to screen code mixed. I think that will make it uppercase. Yeah. Okay, it's sort of working because it's not crashing. But it's not showing us the directory. What does it drive? Hmm. Alright, let's double check our code here. Let's go back to the top. Show directory clear screen black. Dire name minus dire name. Uh huh. Load X with dire name. Low and high. Jump server name, set name. Oh. Load accumulator with 0, 02. Load X with drive number. Load Y with 0. Jump subroutine. Set logical file system. Ah, I think I, I missed it here. Kernel. Call open. We missed it. So after the set logical file system, we need to do kernel open. Is that all I missed? Let's keep checking. Set kernel open branch. Ah, branch of carry set to error. Okay. And then load X with number. I missed some stuff here. Zero two. Set the file number. And then jump subroutine kernel check in kernel check in yep I think that's what I missed I missed that stuff let's try it now hey got it so there's the directory subroutine and it's working cool <clears throat> so now we just need to add the Show drive status. Let's take some of these extra spaces out. There we go. Jump to exit. Yep, yeah, okay, cool. Show directory routine. Done. And it's converted from this um, code base uh, input output, DOS examples, reading the directory. And you can see this is not kick assembler, but we have just converted it to kick assembler. Now for the show drive status, let's take a look. Uh huh, show drive status. Let's do it. So we're going to load the accumulator with zeros, store the accumulator at 90. This is a zero page clear status flag. So if you ever wondered how to clear all your status flags, that's how to do it. I guess that's the status register. Let's take a look. Um, memory map. What is 90? 90 is... It doesn't say arithmetic registers. Hmm. Interesting. Eh. That's a topic for another day. All right, maybe that's what it stores, where it stores its results of whatever it's doing. So now we're gonna load the drive number. Device number. Then we're gonna jump subroutine kernel. Listen, listen here, pal. We're going to load the accumulator with 6F. 
This is the secondary address. And then we're going to jump so we're team Colonel Sec Listen. <laughs> Second. So it's not, I don't have that defined. FF93. Do I? Is it in here? FF93. Wait, there it is. Listen, so. Let's do this. We're going to also add. What they're saying, sick, listen. Because I feel like that should be a standard, but I guess it's not. Colonel, sick, listen. Hmm. Jump subroutine after that to Colonel, unlisten. Let's just double check to make sure that that's the same. FFAE. FFAE is unlisten. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Alright, so we've got unlisten, then we're going to load accumulator with. What's it? 90. Yep, yeah, okay, so it got the status flags. So those kernel routines updated whatever's at in the zero page at 90, obviously. We just wanted to clear it out before we did anything with it. And this is a label we're gonna create here in a minute. SDS, drive not present. Device not present error. Then we're going to load the accumulator with the drive number again. Drive number, and then jump subroutine. Kernel. Talk. Okay, kernel talk is what we're going to use. What is kernel talk? No, that's, it's FFB4 kernel. Yep, that's correct. Okay, cool. So far, my constants are lining up pretty good, which is cool. All right, so we've called talk. We want to load the cannon with 6F. It's the secondary address. All right, got 6F. Then jump to subroutine, kernel. Tech talk. All right, so this is another thing. This is FF96, FF96. Ah, talk SA. It's another thing that looks like I may not have the proper kernel names. Sec talk. So I'll just copy that to Sec talk. No big deal. Sec talk. Yep. Boom. Got it. Cool. SDS loop label. Load accumulator 90. Get status flags. Branch if not equal to SDS EOF. Let's get her into this. <clears throat> SDS EOF and jump subroutine. Colonel I E S N I C E N I E N. All right, let's check and make sure that that's correct. I C E C E I N. Where are you, my friend? FFA5. Yep. Cool. Colonel IECN. And then jump to subroutine. Colonel. Char out. Okay. Colonel Char out. Jump. Okay. Jump to SDS loop. 
And then SDS BOF label. Uh, jump subroutine kernel untalk. It should be FFAB. FFAB. Yep, FFAB. Cool. And then return from subroutine. Dev not present. And this is where you can handle device not present error handling. We're not going to be doing that, although I might do that in the future. There we go. Show drive status is done. Let's try it out. No errors, which is cool. T. Hey, boom. There's our drive status. Change drive status. Directory. It can't read nine. Huh? Let's go back to eight. Directory. Boom. And there we have it. And so that's a wrap for di uh, part seven, disk status and directory of the Commodore 64 programming series. All of our um, programming that we've done for this series is on this repo. From part one, two, three, four, five, and six, now seven. So you can go there, click in any of the folders, and uh, you can uh, download the programs, uh, the PRG files for the Commodore 64. It's all in there. So there you go. Until next time, this is Deadline with Cities In. <laughs>